Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a fully working Xbox 360 Slim. As you can see, it's playing a bit of Deus Ex, Human Revolution, and it's working perfectly fine. Now in this video, I'm gonna RGH mod this Xbox Slim. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Straight off the bat, to be honest with you guys, um, this is not going to be a guide video. It's going to be a more of a vlog video. Um, the reason for that is I've not really uh, RGH modded uh, a lot of um, Xbox 360s. And the last thing I want to do is, you know, tell you to do something and I give you the wrong information. Um, so it's going to be more of a, a vlog video where I just go through uh, and show you what I'm doing. Um, also, uh, this Xbox, I got it for £28.50. <laughs> yeah, no joke. I'll show you at the end of the video the uh, winning um, listing. Um, <laughs> £28.50, yeah. Insane. Fully works perfectly fine. Um, now, I was going to split this video up into two videos. Uh, the first video was me stripping it down, giving it a good clean, and then putting it all back together. And obviously the following video would be me RGH uh, modding the Xbox 360 Slim. Um, but I thought, nah, I might as well kill two birds with one stone. Um, because if I do split them up into two videos, I'd have to get in it, clean it, put it back together again. And then in the next video, get in it, mod it, and put it back together again. So yeah, I just thought I'd do both of them at the same time. I thought I'd take this opportunity just to talk you through some of the equipment um, and the glitch chip I'm going to use to mod this Xbox 360 Slim. Now the top device, the white device, that is a JR programmer and I'm going to be using that to dump the Xbox 360's NAND. I'm also going to use it to program the glitch chip. Uh, and I'm going to use it to reprogram the glitched image uh, back to the Xbox 360's NAND. Now the two devices, the two blue devices at the bottom, uh, they are actually the glitch chip uh, I'm going to use. I'm only going to be using one of them. Now the one on the left, you can see it's got a crystal on it. Um, that's the one I'm going to be using. Uh, that one's designed for the Corona motherboards and, and this is what's in this. Xbox 360 slimmer Corona motherboard. Uh, now the one on the right is for the Fats and the Trinity Slim, uh, the one without the crystal. Um, now they're both called the Matrix um, glitch chip, um, but one comes with a crystal and one doesn't. Um, and depending on what type of Xbox 360 you've got depends on whether you get the one with the crystal or the one without the crystal. Now the install type uh, I'm going to be doing to this Xbox 360 Slim uh, is known as the Muffin install. So yeah, let's get on with it. Let's get installing the RGH into this Xbox 360 Slim. Now the first thing I want to remove is the R drive uh, and that's not too difficult. Uh, you just pull this catch here, you lift up this flap, just hold it in, you remove that. And the Xbox 360 Slim R drive just pulls straight out, you just grab this little tab and you pull it up and there you go. That's the R drive out of the system. Now I've just removed the R drive, what I want to do next is remove this plastic cover very easy you just grab it like this and it just pulls straight off easy peasy <laughs> now the opposite side is a little bit more tricky to get off um, but the way you do it is you get a, a flat-headed screwdriver and you just get it in one of the corners and you just lever it out and then once you've got a little bit pulling out you can just pull the whole of this plastic off I've got a little bit of the plastic sticking up, you can see where I've just pulled it out and all you do is just come along and you just keep going along like this 
pinching and pulling uh, until eventually the cover comes off okay <laughs> got to try and uh, show you how you do this next part because it's uh, a little bit tricky to get these plastic shrouds uh, off the sides um, if you look here you can see uh, gaps every now and again now what you need to do is you need to get a, a flat headed screwdriver like this and if you stick it down like that you'll come to a stop that's stopped now then what you do is you pull it forward like this and the clip will unleash now the best part to start is on the sides and what you do is you push up like this on the sides with your nail like this and you unclip this and then you just keep going around like this until you've got them all unclipped so I'll do that and then come back so that's that side panel off what I can do is show you now the panels actually off um, how you do it um, pretty much what I was doing is, is I was taking my screwdriver like this this flat headed screwdriver and I was moving it down like this until you get to the to the actual clip bit there just like this and then once I got there all I did was just push it forward and it removes it from the clip on this side and you just go around doing all the clips like that and the side panel will come off what I need to do now is turn it to the opposite side and do the same with this side panel so I'll crack on with that and then come back now I've got the two side panels off the next thing I want to remove is this I think it's a Wi-Fi card um, do that now before I forget to do it now to take this out you need to remove this Torx 10 screw just here uh, once you remove that you should be able to pull the card straight out like this so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back what I want to do now is remove the actual top of the case now you can already see the two clips on this side there's one just here and there's one just here there are also I turn it around a couple of clips uh, just down there maybe you can see the first one just there um, it's hidden by the actual um, metal shield um, but there's one there and there's one just behind it as well um, if you've got a long enough screwdriver you can normally reach it so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and unclip those and then I'll take the top um, and the bottom um, off the Xbox 360 slim that's the back panel removed now to take off the top of the case uh, to do that I need to remove five black screws I'll show you them there's one here there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those and I should be able to take off the top of the case. That's the top of the case removed. Um, yeah, it is looking a little bit dusty in there. <laughs> it does need a good clean. Um, yeah, what I need to do now is remove the front plate. Now it should be already loose. Um, yeah it is, it's loose, look. Nothing holding it on. Now you've got to be very careful though guys because you can see a, a ribbon cable. Oops, don't want that to fall and break the ribbon cable. Uh, it comes along like this, goes along here, um, plugs into here. Now to get this off, what you do, just move this back, pull this out a little bit, is you pull out the tabs on the side like this. And that's the tabs out now you can see like a little square bracket around it that's a bit of plastic what you need to do is get some tweezers you pull on this blue bit here and then you can pull out the actual ribbon cable so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back what I want to remove now is the ring of light board uh, now to do that it's very easy you need a Torx 8 bit and you remove this screw and this screw and then you'll be able to pull the ring of light board out what I want to remove next is the shrouding for the fan now that's super easy you can just grab it and pull it straight out like this that's the shroud out um, I'll put that in the wash with the rest of the case um, what I want to do next is remove the 
drive, the DVD-ROM drive. Now to do that, I'll show you at the back, I need to remove the actual power input here. I need to remove the SATA cable uh, and then the drive will pull straight out. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. Now I can see the motherboard inside the system, I can tell straight away. Uh, this is a Corona motherboard. Now the reason you can tell that is if this uh, connection here and this connection were both running down like this, both parallel, uh, it would make this board a Trinity. Um, but this is the Corona and it's actually a 16 megabyte NAND Corona. So it shouldn't be too difficult to mod this thing. So yeah, what I'll do now is I need to remove the actual housing for the R drive. Now to do that, I need to remove uh, a few screws. If I turn it over, there are a few screws I need to remove. I need to remove this one, this one, this one, and this one. And that will allow me to remove the actual housing for the R drive. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. Sneaky Microsoft also put a screw here that you need to remove. Now to remove the hard drive housing. Now all the screws are removed. There are two connections I need to take care of. The first one is this SATA cable and the second one is the power cable from the hard drive. And then should be able to just pull the hard drive caddy straight out and you know what we're almost there now to remove the hold of the motherboard um, there's only five screws left there's this one here which is a t10 and the final four are on the x clamp um, which are t8s so i'll go ahead and remove those and then we'll be able to take the motherboard out Now the final thing I need to remove so I can get the motherboard out is this little bracket here that goes between the motherboard and the DVD-ROM drive. Now I should be able to just lift the motherboard out now but I'm not going to do that yet because I don't need to work on it uh, on the underside just yet but I just removed the screws just makes me easier so uh, when I do need to get it out I can get it out. So yeah what I'm going to do now uh, is start hooking up the wires uh, so I can get ready to read the NAND um, this chip here on the Xbox 360 slim motherboard so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back now to read the NAND and write the NAND I'm using something called a JR programmer and to do that to read the NAND um, I need to find out where to solder my wires to these two headers. Uh, now to do that is very easy. Um, on the program JRunner, you just go to images, uh, you go down to, where is it, uh, X, uh, Nandex Slim, and you click on the Corona, we know this is a Corona board, uh, and that will show you where to install the color coded wires so I can dump the NAND JR programmer and the NAND X use the same um, pin out so the wires colors are the same so I'll go ahead and wire those to the board and then we can see if we can dump this Xbox NAND that's all the wires all wired in for reading the NAND what I'll do now is I'll get my JR programmer hooked up and I'll run JRunner uh, and see if we can dump the NAND. As you can see, I've hooked up JR programmer. Um, I've got JRunner running. Um, what I'm going to do is just to prove to you that it's recognized uh, the Xbox Flash. I'll just press the question mark and as you can see it's come back with a valid flash configuration it even knows the consoles a corona 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the NAND and I'm just going to press read NAND and it should stop start dumping the NAND. Now what I need to do uh, is get two valid NAND dumps. Now what will happen is it will, you can see here it's dumping it twice, uh, it will dump the NAND once uh, when it's done that um, it will dump the NAND again and it will compare those two images uh, and if they're the same I can continue if they're not I'll need to check my wiring make sure everything's okay um, but yeah before you continue you need to make sure you get two valid compared matching uh, NAND dumps so yeah I'll let this carry on dumping the NAND and when it's finished I'll come back uh, and then we can write the ECC file which is basically um, Zell so yeah I'll be back in a second now J Runner has just finished uh, dumping the NANs along with the JR programmer and the most important thing you can see down here are NANs are the same now you want to get that um, if you dump your NANs, uh, you know, you do, do two dumps and it compares them both and they're not the same, do not continue. What you need to do is desolder everything, um, shorten your wires, maybe shorten your wires, put everything back together again, solder it back in and then try again. Because that's the magic you want there, where it says NANs are the same. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to generate the ECC file and then I'm going to write it uh, to the NAND and then uh, we can get installing the um, glitch chip uh, and hopefully glitch into Zell so now the first thing I want to make sure is uh, glitch 2 is chosen which it is and I want to make sure CR4 is chosen now I'm going to press create ECC and as you can see ECC created. Now I'm going to write that to the NAND and it shouldn't take too long because it, it's only a, a small portion it writes to the NAND. And there we go. Done. What I need to do now um, is program the glitch chip and install it and then we can boot the Xbox uh, and hopefully get a glitch and we get glitched into Zell and we can get our CPU key because that's the main goal here is to get our CPU key so what I'll do is I'll get everything set up to program the glitch chip uh, and then I'll come back what I need to do now is program the timing files uh, to the glitch chip now sadly I can't show you me doing that and the reason for that is because I've got to hold uh, this connector in these this header just here like this and put pressure on it um, you can actually solder it in but it's easy doing it this way um, but obviously I can't hold that and hold the camera and film at the same time but I'll show you what I'm going to do um, I'm just going to go to advanced I'm going to go to custom NAND CR functions I'm going to go down to XFVF and I'm going to choose the timing file and it should be in the XSVS folder now this is a muffin remember when I told you it was a muffin we're going to go Corona and this is the one we want the one with the quartz crystal on it you can just see it there so I'm going to click in there and the one we want is muffin 3-1 underscore D so I'm going to select that I'm going to open that and then all I do is press run and JR programmer would program the um, glitch chip so I'll go ahead and do that and then we can install the glitch chip into the Xbox 360 slim I programmed the glitch chip uh, what I need to do now is bridge a connection 
um, you can see it says slim on this side, flat on this side. So what I need to do this top row, the center one and the one on the left, I have to bridge together. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back and show you what it looks like. As you can see, they're both bridged together. What I need to do now is install this glitch chip into the Xbox 360 Slims motherboard. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back and show you what it looks like afterwards. That's the glitch chip installed. Now you may be going, why are your wires uh, looking like that? Um, simple reason is the shorter your wires, the more chance the glitch chip uh, has got a glitch in the system. So yeah, instead of it being all nice and neat and snaking like you would on a PS2 mod, um, the shorter the wires the better. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this back in the case now and I'm going to boot it and hopefully the glitch chip glitches the system and we boot Zell. So yeah, I'll go and set up and then come back. Moment of truth. Will it glitch and we get Zell uh, now to turn the Xbox 360 Slim on um, there's no face plate so you may be going how do you turn it on well if you look just at the connector here just above it there is a, a resistor a very small resistor now, if you get your finger on it you can actually turn it on so here we go moment of truth there we go we're on do we get a glitch it's glitching yeah, we got a boot. Come on, show me Zell. Yes! Winner! We got Zell! See if we get the CPU key. We should get the CPU key now. Major parts done now, guys. Um, pretty much all I have to do now is make a glitch image. Um, using JRunner. Uh, reprogram over that glitched image to the NAND and that's it uh, we got a RGH modded Xbox 360 Slim and as you can see there's my CPU key yeah why not so what I'll do now is I'll get my PC up top and everything again and um, We'll get the CPU key, generate that glitched image, and then program over the NAND. So yeah, back in a little while. I'm all hooked up. I've got a network cable going into the Xbox that goes into my router just down there. What that allow me to do is suck the CPU key from Zao um, into JRunner. Uh, and then I can create my glitched image and then I can program it over to the NAND so let's power on the Xbox by doing a little cheat the Xbox should glitch uh, it can take a few times to glitch There you go, it got it. It does, it takes a, it could take a little bit of time to do that. As you can see, Zell is loading. Now that should set up an IP where I can get the CPU key. And what is the IP? I'm trying to see it, it looks like it's 198. So I need to go in here, 192.168.1.98, just make sure, 98. Now if I say get CPU key. Uh, it's not done it. Why has it not done that? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I looked at the wrong network config. It's this one here. It's 192.168.0.3. Got me a bit worried there. <laughs> so let's go 0 dot 3 
and let's do it again and there we go we got my got my CPU key and um, we know it's worked because it's decrypted everything so that's winner winner what I need to do now is make sure I'm still on glitched yes and I need to make my um, glitched image build and there we go what I need to do now uh, is hook up the JR programmer and flash the NAND so I'll get everything set up and we'll crack on with it I've got JR programmer all hooked up ready to write this NAND image now so I should only have to press write NAND and there we go, you can see it's writing the new glitched NAND image. So what I'll do is I'll let that finish and when it has, I'll come back and hopefully we'll have a glitched Xbox 360 Slim. As you can see, J1 has finished writing the NAND. Got a nice green light on the JR programmer let's disconnect everything and see if we get a, an Xbox 360 boot up fingers crossed <laughs> the NAND uh, has been flashed with the glitched image let's see if we've got a glitched Xbox so let's power on Wow, I think that was first glitch, actually. And there we go. Winner, winner. You've got a glitched Xbox. Uh, what I can do now, just power it off. There we go. What I can do now uh, is take five minutes uh, and desolder the NAND flashing uh, wires that you use to flash the NAND and read the NAND. Um, you can leave them in there if you want to, you know, you couldn't eaten this up and then um, leave them in there, but there's there's no need for them to be in there. I'm, I'm going to take them out now. Uh, and that's this system, RGH hat. Uh, not too difficult. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get these wires desoldered off uh, and then I'll come back. I have the Xbox motherboard out of the case again because um, I want to give it a good clean. Uh, as you can see, I've removed the wires that you use to program the NAND and read the NAND. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is give this system a bloody good clean because it needs it. As you can see, I've got all the upper and lower case and the fan shroud and everything else uh, soaking in the bath. What I'll do is I'll leave that for half an hour, then come back and give it a really good scrub and clean. What I want to do now is remove the fan, um, but first I'm not going to remove it like this because I want to get it back in its case and get the screws back in that old DX clamp down. Um, because the last thing I need to do is start taking the fan off with this screw and there's one on the opposite end there and I rock the fan like that and the seal breaks on the uh, heat compound uh, and I have to re-grease it and then put it all back together so yeah I'm just going to get the wall board back in its shell and I'm going to screw down the X clamp as you can see I took the fan off give it a really good clean not difficult to get off it's just one screw here and the final screw is here remove those and you can take the fan off and yeah it's nice and clean now what I'm going to do now is get the system all put back together 
just before I put the front and back cover on just want to show you what it looks like inside hopefully you agree uh, it's looking a lot cleaner in there <laughs> so yeah what I'll do is I'll get the front and back cover on and I'll get the face on as well uh, and then that's it we're all done let's fire up and uh, wrap up the video as you can see we're all back together now I've got a USB stick in the Xbox 360 Slim um, it's got XEX menu on there it's just uh, so I can show you it. it's actually RGH uh, so let's press the ring of light button on the controller and boot the Xbox 360 Slim that was second glitch yep two glitches and as you can see the 360 is starting up now you may be wondering how I know how many glitches uh, it was um, you may be able to pick it up you can hear a slight whine coming from the fan it's nothing serious it, it does that on the uh, slim Xboxes but you can count how many times the, the glitch chip tried to gl glitch the system um, so yeah as you can see we're in the Xbox menu now what I'll do is I use my controller and navigate to my games and you can see there's XCX menu now if I click on that it should boot it and it does now on a retail Xbox it, it would just not boot it it will come up as corrupt and there you go it is XCX menu so yeah that proves uh, the Xbox 360 is glitched. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the dashboard uh, and then speaking as dashboard I could install a, a different dash if I wanted to probably something like Aurora um, but I'm not going to do that in this video um, you know it takes a fair while to do that and I'm, I'm not going to do that in this video. Now um, if I go back to my games which is there, uh, you can see I've got Deus Ex Human Revolution already installed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to eject the drive and you can see there's no disk in the drive and the actual disk uh, is in the case. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that. Now if I was to try and start that on a standard retail Xbox um, it would complain and ask me to put the disk in the drive uh, but if I just press A uh, it just starts the game up so uh, yeah no more CD checks and as you can see the game has started up so yeah there you go guys it wasn't a guide video it's more of a vlog video uh, it's like I mentioned I didn't want to give you the wrong information so I made it a vlog video where I just went through it instead of telling you how to do the steps um, but what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below uh, to a YouTuber uh, it goes by the name of The Weekend Modder um, he modifies Xboxes 360s in his spare time to make a bit of extra cash revenue uh, and I'll put a link uh, to his channel in the description below but yeah there you go guys hope you liked the video please give it a big thumbs up like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Sweet. We got an RGH, Xbox 360. Winner, winner. <laughs> catch you next time, guys. Now before I forget, I'll show you how much I paid uh, for this Xbox 360 Slim. Uh, there it is. There's a listing. Uh, it was sold on the Xbox 360S console. Two wireless controllers, untested, spares or repairs. It was £20 for the actual console and it was £8.50 shipping, uh, which comes to a grand total of £28.50. I'll take that, thank you very much. <laughs>